The European Development Days are an annual event that brings together leaders, policy makers, researchers, experts, civil society activists and so on from all over Europe and all over the world to talk about the future development agenda. And this year was a particularly important meeting because we are beginning to think through what the post-2015 development agenda will be. The Millennium Development Goals expire in 2015 and the international community now needs to negotiate what the next framework is going to look like. Well, obviously there were many different um, perspectives put forward but what we saw is there some points of consensus among the different participants who were speaking at the days. An important one is that we mustn't give up on the Millennium Development Goals that we have. There are some goals that we're still off track to meet and we need to make sure that those and that the focus on reducing absolute poverty or eliminating absolute poverty that that gets maintained very strongly. But there's also agreement generally across the participants that we need to really broaden out the development agenda that some things were missing from the first round of Millennium Development Goals. And there was some agreement about what types of issues need to be on that agenda. One of those was fragility, that um, the states which are really going to be left behind are those states which are trapped in conflict with really serious structural problems and that's where we need to put our energies. Another one was around the environment, that there are, there are processes to establish environmental frameworks running alongside processes to establish development frameworks and we need to make sure these are linked, we need to build synergy between environment and development global agendas because these two issues are profoundly linked. Another major issue that came out and which I think is going to be on the future agenda is around inequality. The inequality within countries, which is going to grow as many countries grow, and inequality bec between countries, which is a source of resentment and, and challenges. So again, this is something which has been left out. It's highly politically controversial, but it needs to be there. And finally, I think there was, there was acknowledgement from many of the leaders who were speaking that we need to really look again at the, at the global rules around um, how we manage finances, how we manage um, co tax, co issues of corruption, issues of resource management and so on to make sure that the global rules around trade of course to make sure that the global rules really work for developing countries and support them to grow and to reduce poverty rather than perhaps um, supporting corruption or bad governance. I think this new development agenda brings some interesting challenges and opportunities for the EU. In terms of opportunities, the EU is well placed to lead on a number of these issues. For example, fragility, the EU has a policy framework that can address fragility, it's shown political commitment to do so and it's really engaged in this debate and can provide leadership. Likewise on environment, the EU we know it's a leader on environmental issues, it has a lot of knowledge, a lot of expertise it can offer to developing countries and around the world and I think this is somewhere the EU can really take a lead. Likewise, in terms of global rules, for example, around, around financial flows, resource management and so on, the EU has the collective weight to really push for changes in this area. It's a powerful player and it needs to use that power and it can make a difference. But there are also challenges and many of them have to do with the way the EU works internally. For example, we know that aid isn't going to be a source of great leverage in the future. That that countries are, uh, are going to grow, they're not going to rely so much on aid and the EU's leverage is going to come from other policy areas, both external and internal. For example, from trade, from migration, from agricultural policies and so on. So the EU now needs to really take seriously the idea of policy coherence for development, which it's been talking about for a very long time, and really make sure that these policy areas are linked up in a way that supports developing countries rather than undermines them. Mm -hmm.